Hello, my name is Jan Tots, and I will briefly present our results on the impact of spatial confinement on the dynamics of vortex rings. Excitable systems are abundantly found in nature, in a variety of biological, chemical, and physical systems. One example is shown in the top left, which is a video recording of a rotating spiral wave in a Belushov Jabotinsky medium. Another important example is a human heart, where spiral waves are thought to play a role in the formation of pathological tachycardia. The heart is of course three-dimensional, which motivates us to look beyond two-dimensional spiral waves and towards the analogs in three dimensions. We are particularly interested here in an axisymmetrical structure called scoring. In the following, we show its construction. First, we stretch the two-dimensional spiral wave shape along the z-axis. The central red cylinder is called the organizing center of filament. The filament can be bent into any shape. Here we will choose a closed ring. Now all spiral shapes are reattached and you can see the full structure of the squall ring. It is characterized by its radius r and the filament plane height z. Far from any boundaries, this ring is known to contract with a rate proportional to the ring curvature, given by 1 over r, as well as drift along its symmetry axis in the z direction. However, what is not known and what we want to find out here is the following. What happens when the ring is close to a confining no-flux boundary? For example, will it still contract? To this end, we perform experiments in which we observe the scoring in a chemical active medium with a camera from the top. Here, the filament ring is highlighted in red. You can see that it contracts while alternatingly emitting waves inwards and outwards. To analyze our experiments, we create a space-time plot by stacking all pixels of the red line on top of each other. This allows us to easily observe the ring contraction, measure its radius, and also its finite lifetime. Now I will summarize our experimental findings. Starting with the case that is furthest away from the boundary, we find rings that contract according to the unputted dynamics and vanish after a short time. We average the video frames here to easily detect the filament. Therefore, it is possible to see a dark ring that corresponds to the filament location. In moderate distance, we still observe contracting rings, but although they are starting from a smaller initial radius, they live longer than their free counterparts. A little bit closer to the boundary, we also found for the first time persistent rings. In this particular example, the radius changed by less than 3.5% over the course of the entire experiment. Now, even closer at the boundary, we do not find contracting rings anymore, but now the rings even expand. At the closest distance, we find rings that after a few periods already collide with the no-flux boundary and vanish abruptly. We further explored the confined dynamics in full three-dimensional simulations for different initial ring radii and boundary distances. The filament line is represented by a point in the reduced radius distance plane. Far from the no-flux boundary, the ring contracts and periodically sends out waves that entrain the whole medium. Our simulations show the same cases we already found in the experiments. From free contraction over transient but extremely long living rings to expanding and colliding ones. An explanation for the three-dimensional dynamics is deeply rooted in the dynamics known in two dimensions. Two-dimensional spiral waves are known to drift in parallel to a no-flux boundary. In three dimensions, this drift opposes the curvature-induced contraction. Also, the self-interaction of the ring is equivalent to a boundary-induced drift and leads to a drift directed downwards for rings of small radius. We confirm our hypothesis by solving kinematic equations, including the boundary-induced drift velocity fields from two dimensions, and find that it agrees perfectly with the simulations. In conclusion, our chemical experiments show that spatial confinement leads to qualitatively new scoring dynamics. Instead of collapse after finite time, our experiments reveal substantial lifetime enhancement for the rings, as well as for the first time persistent and even expanding squall rings, and that despite of positive filament tension. The persistent squall ring is a special case. It acts as a self-organized three-dimensional pacemaker that dictates the oscillation frequency of the whole medium.